Bengals show blitz back off. Smith now going to pass. He's going to fire down the far sideline. He's got a receiver. One-handed grab. No. Incomplete. He had Luke Hyde down the field. Wait. They're going to call it a catch, and that moves the chains. Unbelievable catch by Luke Hyde. What a grab. Uh, he completely tricked me. I'll be honest there. There's no way he was catching that. But Luke Hyde proved me otherwise with one-handed grab on that far sideline. Unbelievable grab. Welcome in Deseret News Rewind, Dusty Litster, Dane Stewart as always, presented by Hyde and Associates, brought to you by the Utah Army National Guard, and now outfitted by Black Clover. That's right, Dusty, and we're both donning our Black Clover gear, and you're looking like, you know, you got summer and blue skies. I'm kind of gloomy today wearing the all gray, <laughs> but you know what? You can still look sharp, and we feel great. They've got a full line of men's and women's gear. Hats as well, collegiate hats also available. Go to blackcloverusa.com, enter the promo code DNR20 for 20% off your order from Black Clover. And if you don't think people are wearing it, all you had to see is at the end of the Bingham uh, Corner Canyon game last night, a Corner Canyon coach wearing a Black Clover hat with the CC logo. All right. They'll take care of you, and we're going to be taking care of that too. But yep. go support those who support us, and uh, we'll go through Hadam Associates and uh, Utah Army National Guard and what they offer you as yep. viewers of our show as well a little bit later. Well, let's jump in right at the beginning here. The opening statement brought to you by Heidemann and Associates. If you've got any law needs whatsoever, get a free consultation. Just go to our friends at Heidemann Associates. That's right. You can give them a call 801-754-4240. Or if you're not quite certain if they're going to handle your legal question, they will. You can check them out online at utah.law and uh, take advantage of that free consultation from the experts at Heidemann Associates. Absolutely. Well, one thing we want to talk about, we're three weeks in. Um, I remember after week one, which was so long ago now. Yeah, right. <laughs> People reach out to us directly and we're like, hey, hope you enjoyed this weekend. It'll be dead in a month. We're still here. Yeah. We're still kicking and everything's looking great. Doesn't mean we don't let up. But let's talk about the things we've learned through three weeks. And uh, we're here at Corner Canyon. Here's the one thing I've learned. Corner Canyon is really, really good at football. You know, I was I was at a game last night and someone was like, you just can't give Coach Care Jackson Dart. I mean, that's just not fair. It's almost like a cheat code, right? And you look at this offense and, hey, Bingham hung with them for a half. It was a great effort in that first half. But third quarter, that's what we've been accustomed to seeing from Corner Canyon this year. They blew that game open in the third. And, uh, I mean, the question for me is, is there anyone who can hang with them? Because the way they're playing right now, I, I don't know. As of right now, the only contenders are in region play. Yeah. What Corner Canyon's done has been um, unreal coming off of the same kind of stuff that all of us have done. Uh, the other thing I've realized is, uh, and I know this is going to shock you, Region 4 is really, really good. I mean, PG, AF, Sky Ridge, McKay Hillstead. Maybe I should have just done McKay Hillstead, but yeah. I can't slight my, my Carbon County connection of uh, Maddox Madsen only taught McKay Hillstead. But my goodness, Region 4, because even now West Lake is undefeated. Well, here's the other thing, Dusty. You and I were talking last night as I was driving home, and I'm like, Lone Peak. Lone Peak gets better each week. New offensive coordinator. Things offensively are starting to click a little bit more. That defense, it's just a reload and replace right now where seemingly every week you expect that defensive line to come up with multiple TFLs and sacks. And we haven't even talked about Westlake, who this might be one of their best teams in school history. Yeah, one of their best starts, if not their best start in yeah. school history. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So if you think I'm only talking 6A in Region 4, he is. Long. You're wrong, <laughs> but it will be a four. How about 4A? Every yeah. week there is, I mean, when I go through the best games of the night, it's 4A, yeah. and it's wide open. I don't know who I would take because if you asked me to begin the year, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll look at Dixie or I'll look at one, maybe one of the Cache Valley schools. By the way, Ridgeline is pretty stinking good. Um, it, but every weekend there's a, there's a handful of great 4A games. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, is a team that's been, you know, top of the class of that classification for a long time, the Dixie Flyers, they're 0-3 and they've only been outscored by seven points. So, I mean, you look at, I mean, you have some teams that have been perennials down there off to, you know, tough starts and a tough loss last night for Dixie. We'll get into more of that. But you're right. I mean, you look at this 4A classification and what's up is down, what down is up. It's like, who knows what's going on any given week in 4A. <laughs> You're just in the funhouse. Yeah, you're, right. You're, you keep looking in the freaking mirror and you can't find the exit. <laughs> uh, well, I want to talk about 5A, and I, I don't know what we've learned about 5A because 5A is still everyone to bang on Timview. They haven't looked very good. They haven't looked very good. Orm looked them unreal against East. It's like okay, what we I think what we found out too is if you play against Region Four teams in, in preseason, non-region, 
You might not look as good as you might be, but 5A, Dane, I don't know. Here's my, I, what I would say about 5A we learned through three weeks. I've learned, I don't know what I've learned because I've watched a lot of 5A football. I don't know what I've learned through, through the first three weeks of 5A football. Well, to me, it's really interesting. You look at like 5A to me is a toss up. I think, or sorry, Region 5 is a complete toss-up at this point. Region 6, I think you have a couple teams there. Uh, we've talked about Brighton, how good they are. I don't know if they have the physicality to match up with the top of Region 7, the likes of Tim View and Orem. Alta's off to a good start. That offense has been really great. As long great. as they don't play against Skyridge. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's one of those where it's like Tim View didn't look great against Lone Peak, Region 4. Alta didn't look great against Skyridge, Region 4. You get outside of that, Orem didn't look great against Skyridge. It's like... All of a sudden, this maybe becomes a little more level playing field. Lehigh, you know, Cooper finally got some touchdown passes hey, last night. And Craig. thank goodness, congratulations, get off the schneid. Then you got Region 8. Springville's off to a tough start. I mean, it's just, it is. Maple Mountain. Maple Mountain's, not. Yeah, Maple Mountain's, Mountain's not. been strong. It's yeah. been good. Wasatch as well. Wasatch is looking, yeah, Wasatch had a great night last night. But it's, I, yeah, as I look at it, say, okay, who's the favorites? And who I would tell you I think is the favorite in that classification? You say, yeah, they got blown out last night. Yeah. Yep. That's just 5A. Yep. And that's what happens when you play against some of those top teams. Um, outside of that, the 3A original uh, normal powers, that, since you know we've gotten to be able to focus on 3A, yeah. has been shaked. So the powers of 3A, the winds of change might be coming. Well, winds of change at Juan Diego this year. Coach Colosimo, you know, no longer the head man there. And, boy, it has been changed for Juan Diego. I mean, Dusty, if I told you that, you know, they had 118 points and 44 points, you would guess that's offense to defense. It's, it's not. They've only scored 44 points in the first three weeks, given up almost 120 in those first three weeks. They're 0-3. This is one of the winningest programs in state history. And, you know, it's always tough when you have a coaching transition to get things kind of sorted out and figured out. But, Man, Juan Diego off to a tough start. You mentioned Morgan, and they've had some, you know, difficult games where they've been a little slow out of the shoot that particular week. Comebacks have fallen just shy. But, I mean, this 3A classification, Dusty, there's still some good teams in it. I mean, North Summit, North, or sorry, North Sampete. North Sampete. Looks Bowls, man. on a tear yeah. right now. They've got that offense rolling. And, uh, but yeah, 3A, we're, we're just seeing different things this year. It's 2020, what do you expect? <laughs> and we'll get through it too, and, and 2A, Nothing changed. It's Beaver. Well, it's Beaver. It is Beaver, but you can't look past Canabs off to a great start this year. It's Beaver. Miller <laughs> continues to be strong. It's been Mil a great hey, program. I tell you to Reed. That kid's a handful. In fact, you're gonna want to check out our schedule video because I'm gonna make Dusty pick that one because Canab is at Miller this week. How did DeGraffin Reeds get out of Payson and out of Salem Hills and get down to Millard? What are we doing? What is this? Hey, they want a little more space, Dusty. Payson's <laughs> getting a little congested. Someone's going to reach out and say they're not from the same family tree. I'm sorry. DeGraff and Reed, it's got to be the same tree. But At Dusty look. Litster on Twitter, folks. Hey, he had a great second half last night. We'll talk yeah, about it a little bit yeah. against, uh, against Delta. And here's the last one, one of the last things. And that, oh, it's not the last thing, but uh, not to make this any longer. But uh, it's been fun, especially because I watched the ESPN broadcast um, initiative talk about uh, – you know, the Utah leading, we were the first state to kind of get things going. And, and I'll say this, it's been fun to say that Utah has kind of has led the way of, hey, we can do this, we can make this work. It doesn't mean we don't have to fix things. It doesn't mean we need to improve things and maybe tighten things back up, make sure we're not getting loosey-goosey yeah. and all of a sudden things go off the rails. So let's make sure we're dressing, we're, you know, we're staying socially distanced and wearing our masks and things. But it's been awesome to see that everything hasn't fallen apart three weeks in because we started playing football because the numbers haven't indicated that that's the case. You know, and we still have our cases. I think every week there's been a game that's been canceled, right? And so we've had those reminders each week of, hey, this is we're not over this yet, right? We're not through it, but we've got a course we're trying to navigate. I think teams are doing a, you know, by and large, a it's really a great good job. job. I mean, we again, if you just have one game canceled every week, that's less than I would have thought. It's less than a lot of people would have thought. I know there's a lot of bickering and questioning, and no one really knows if this is right or not. But you know what, folks? We've got it. We've got it going, and it's an opportunity to showcase young men in our state. Corner Canyon, Bingham last night, everyone in the country tuning in to watch that showdown, and it's a great opportunity for us to get more recognition as a state and for our high school athletes. And what I think has been great, too, is only one of those that I'm aware of have been shut down because of the county said that we need to isolate you and you can't play. Only one of them of all those games. The other ones were the schools, one school say, hey, we're not comfortable, let's just not play. It's, let's not make this bigger than what it needs yeah, to be. Yeah. And the other one saying, hey, we, want, we don't want to make this worse. And only one did the county come and say, no, 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 we shouldn't play this game. Let's not do it. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's, that to me is one of the great silver linings of what's gone on. As, uh, but it doesn't mean, again, we get loose with it. You don't need the deep breath moment. 
a, take a deep breath, but not a, ha, oh, we're good, we'll, yeah. we'll be fine, and let's yeah. just, no, we just gotta stay vigilant with what we're doing, and, and we'll continue to go. So, all right, enough of that. Dane, you were at our game of the week, Lone Peak and East, and uh, by the way, before we get going, I, I just wanna send my condolences. You'd pitch shutouts for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough, Dusty. You know, it's one of those where you, you have a no-hitter going in the ninth inning and someone gives up a double and there goes the streak. I won't say there wasn't a producer in a studio and other place away from you that brought up, hey, Dane's still pitching a shutout. I'm, I'm not going to say who it was, but it was said. Well, I, I, I will tell you, I was going to make a comment that, <laughs> you know, for as good as Lone Peak's defense is, mine is better because I hadn't given up a point in three straight weeks. Totally but, ruined a fun fact. Yeah, I know. Not a fun fact. Well, maybe we can start a streak afresh this week. Go check out our schedule video and find out who I'm going to be cursing on Friday night. But let's get into our game of the week this week, Dusty. Lone Peak and East. And, you know, you talk about a shutout. East was shut out against Orm in week two, the first shutout since 2010. Went and looked that up for this East offense. It just doesn't happen. And Lone Peak, we talk about that offense finding its wheels. Could they have success against East? And would they be able to shut down that East potent running attack? First quarter in this Lone Peak team got things going early. How about Romney to McChesney? A 14-yard touchdown pass about midway through. Made it 7-0 Lone Peak. Peak. Second quarter, we're going to skip you ahead. You know, East had a couple opportunities where they were able to get able to get some drives going. Some penalties ended up kind of kicking themselves in the shins and wouldn't allow them to be able to convert that second quarter. Lone Peak, Romney to Covey, a 24-yard touchdown pass made this 13 to nothing. I say 13 because a couple penalties actually set Lone Peak up with a two-point conversion try from inside the one, and you know where this is going. If you watched our game a couple weeks ago, Siali Tahi running this out. It's 15 to nothing at the break for the Knights. Nothing of much notable mention in the third, so we're going to skip ahead to the fourth quarter, Dusty, and in that fourth quarter, uh, Lone Peak had a really solid drive. The East defense made a nice stand, held them to a field goal. Uh, there were a couple penalties on this play. Lone Peak ended up taking the field goal. How about this? They would kick off from the East 30-yard line after enforcing those penalties. This one sailed way through the end zone just for a fun fact. Meanwhile, uh, how about you know that East offense we talked about couldn't really get things going. And how about this return? You want to see electricity? Dial up a young junior by the name of Franks. Folks, he's only listed at 5'6", 140. This kid is shifty. How about this punt return? He had a punt return that was also... Returned for a touchdown, but came back on a penalty in the third. Franks providing a little electricity for this Lone Peak squad. And then just a couple minutes later, it would be another drive for Lone Peak, able to be capped off by Jackson Willits from six yards out. This score is 32 to nothing. And then we talked about the shutout I had going into the fourth quarter, Dusty, or in the fourth quarter in the ninth inning. And how about this run? Mapa Vainuku able to take this one 80-plus yards to the house. And the East Leopards were shut out last week. They were shut out through three quarters, able to get off of that. Uh, with that uh, long touchdown run from Vainuku, they would go for two, convert it, 32-8, to eight, your final score. And Dusty, you know, that, that score, obviously, it was a lone peak night, right? Yeah. This East team only dressing 60 or 50 kids. They are not dressing a lot of kids right now in accordance with guidelines and a lot of injuries. You know, last week they got banged up a little bit um, at Orem. A lot of guys didn't dress. Zimmerman didn't play in this one. They went with Vailahi, the freshman quarterback. He got a lot of great experience. And you saw some opportunities for him where it's like, oh, that kid's going to be special, right? A couple big plays. And, I mean, man, shoelace tackle away here and there from breaking them big. Uh, also, Amone didn't really play in this one. And so a lot of injuries that he's trying to gut through right now and trying to get healthy for region play come up around the corner. Yeah, you know, and I got to tell you, Lone Peak, and we've had <clears> these games, and uh, it's fun to see McChesney back out there wearing a Lone yeah, Peak right? uniform. Crew, let's get him a number that's not in the 80s, because, I, you know, running backs wearing 80s, this isn't a movie, but I'm just giving him a hard time. Uh, I'll tell you this, the Lone Peak faithful, Dusty, they are loving where this team's at right now, and they understand region play coming up right now. But you have some former players there. We want to give them a little bit of a shout out, right? You got old JD Neilman. <laughs> you got Elder Trowbridge now, and John Marcello, and Ethan Lamb even came up. Was like, "Hey man, how about Lone Peak this year?" Yeah, this Lone Peak team—they're getting better and better each week. Just in time for Region Four play coming up. They're going to be a scary out in that region. Those are good, good crew of kids, right? You know, back in the day, we, you know, they would have had a nickname, but <laughs> love that they're still coming up and talking, and and, uh, and hope they're they're enjoying uh, years out of uh, out of high school. So. Yeah. Uh, and a fun crew. But yeah, I, Lone Peak is going to go in an interesting place. All right, let's go best of 6A, and I'll start here, give you a chance to catch your yeah. breath. Uh, I don't think this will come as a surprise to you. We're sitting in front of Corner Canyon. You win on national television, and you look as good as they did doing it, and Beam came out swinging. Dave Peck, God, I love Dave Peck. Two fake punts in the same drive. I, 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 put, I put on Twitter, I was like, 
shades of the 2014 right. Bishop Gorman game. Everything was out there. He just hung it out there. And I uh, love it, but the bounce back and the ability of Corner Canyon to be down twice, I know it's not that big of a deal, but when you're not down, just one of those yeah. things. They didn't go in the doubt. But Jackson Dart, six touchdowns on the night. Uh, Jackson Light, I'll tell you what, looked uh, probably the best we've seen him look. Jackson was geared up for that one, offense and defense. He was really all over the place, really impressed with him. Handley, he's probably the guy we don't talk enough about because I love talking about Noah Kerr. Obvious reasons, Noah's one of the best receivers in the state's history statistically. I don't make that up. It's what happened. But Talma Chanley had a huge night. But Dart with six touchdown passes. And not only that, losing Austin Bell, which is just – Austin, we just feel for you, man. Yeah. I mean, just couldn't uh, – tears his ACL. Braden, shades of Braden Whistler from a few years ago yeah, yeah. at Bingham. But a uh, big night for Corner Canyon. Best of 6A in my mind. 42-20 winners over Bingham. Well, Dusty, my best of 6A. We got a rivalry game up north. And just because it's not in Region 4 doesn't mean it didn't happen. How about Roy – <laughs> and Fremont going head to head in this one. News huh? Rewind game we had of the week, it for you, and it yeah. was it was not the game of the week. A game of the week. I said a Deseret News <sighs> that Rewind pierces, game. That pierces Dusty. You have I have the, feelings too. You had the game of the week. It was a game of the week. <laughs> well, it was a game. How about the first half, Dusty? I mean, this one was twenty-one to twenty. Fremont at the break. And this is a Fremont team that you know they've been close these first couple weeks. They've looked a lot better than I expected. Hey, did you know Hayden Hall is Dylan, Dallin Hall's little brother? But it was twenty-one twenty at the break for Fremont, and I was kind of like, man, I picked Roy. I, maybe I got that one wrong. Nay, nay, my friend. Out come the Roy Royals in the third. quarter quarter 14 nothing third quarter advantage uh parker kingston had two rushing touchdowns a passing touchdown izzy gordon had two rushing touchdowns as the roy royals come back on fremont get the 34 27 win over the wolves that's a really good one that game was a lot of fun yeah. to watch uh we had that one on desert news rewind a game of the week but it was on desert news Rewind live uh <laughs> Best of 5A. I'm going to go a little uncharted territory here. Not uncharted territory, but maybe off the beaten path because they're pioneers and that's what they do. Lehigh, look, gotten bloodied up a little bit in the first couple of weeks. And you'd be like, well, there's so many other games. Look, Creighton Cooper, we talked about, we got put out on Twitter. Vince did a great job. We were shocked he hadn't thrown a touchdown pass yet yeah. this year. Well, he gets off the schneid and he throws three touchdown passes in the win over Riverton. But I got a new name guy. Peyton Dieters. Peyton Dieters had three <laughs> touchdowns. He went for the trifecta. He had a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and then a kick return for a touchdown. That's checking all the boxes. Peyton Dieters. Yeah, let's get a stick. All right. <laughs> Peyton, I'm sorry, man. Add Dusty Lipster on Twitter. <laughs> Ollie, dude, out of love. I don't get going. I love it. Peyton Dieters. Peyton Dieters. <laughs> We got it. It's stuck now. <laughs> All right, my best of 5A, Dusty. How about a team that had a, a tough loss last week? We both picked against them. I know they play at a lower classification team, but how, the, how about the response from the Bonneville Lakers? You want to know what's impressive to me about this? It wasn't just that they beat Bear River, which they did 37-13. It was scoring 27 points in the first half. They came ready to go against a Bear River team that's had a really good defense this year. They didn't allow Morgan to score till the fourth quarter in week two. Best had five touchdowns, five passing touchdowns in the win for the Lakers. We said Region 5 is wide open. It is. Could Bonneville win that region? Yeah, that's be interesting because there's some teams up and down in five, yeah. Region 5. Yeah. Uh, best of the rest, I tell you, I watched this school every week for the last four years. Spanish Fork. How about the Dons? We're trailing by six going into the fourth quarter, and Dustin Smith's trying to stay undefeated. He has yet to lose at home in his coaching career. That's on the line down yeah. six in the fourth quarter. He's one to know, by the way, uh, going into the fourth quarter. And Zach Dart had a DNR T5 play. Rolling to his right, he evades the rush, somehow slips out of the sack, reverses field and scores to go up. Unreal. And uh, he threw uh, – Morley Bennett had three touchdowns, two receiving, one rushing on the night. And the Dons hold off the Thunder 28-26 in a barn burner from our friends at Spanish Fork TV. But Spanish Fork now 2-0 at home under Coach Dustin Smith. You know, Dusty talked about Jackson Dart. He talked about Zach Dart. Is Davis coming up next? We're going to have to wait and see. How, okay. How's that for a little tease, eh? 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 You like that? <laughs> you like that. All right. Uh, hey, my best of the rest, Dusty. How about a team that took on a two-time defending state champion and number one team in the state? Summit Academy, the yeah. Bears go to Star Valley and this ball game is tied up, Dusty, at halftime, and it's a uh, it's a fourth quarter for Summit Academy. They scored 10 points in the fourth, 10-0, outscoring 
the Braves in that one. And Joe Garlic had two passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. The game, or the, the one that put it away, was a 75-yard touchdown pass to Kilgore in the fourth. And Summit Academy ends like a 21-game winning streak for Star Valley from the state of Wyoming in their 24-14 victory. That's a really good one. Yeah. Coach Les Hamilton, nice win there for, for some academy. Two good, strong wins, San Juan and then Star Valley. Yep. Uh, let's go to the quick hits brought to you by the Utah Army National Guard. If you're looking to make that change in your life, if it's job or if it's school, the Utah Army National Guard is there to help you out. Yeah, they've got over 150 different career path options available. So if you're looking for a place to try to get some job skills for that career you want, no better place than the Utah Army National Guard. It's more than military service. You can get into you know, the medical field, engineering, whatever you might be interested in, they've got a path for you. You can learn more at nationalguard.com. And the best thing about it, you can earn up to $20,000 in educational assistance. Folks, education isn't free. They're going to help you out. Learn more at nationalguard.com. All right, quick hits. Uh, we'll start here. Harriman, been a yeah. tough start of the year. A 17-14 win over West Jordan. Cody Lazenby found Michael Falatea. 20 yards out for the game-winning touchdown. Tough start for West Jordan but uh, a much needed win for Dustin Pierce's crew. Yeah, a nice come from behind win. How about the Alta Hawks? We talked about this team is finding their footing. Yes, they are. Ethan Jackson had another huge night in a 51 to 12 victory over Tooele. Five passing touchdowns and DeAndre Randolph with one of the more impressive touchdown grabs you'll see. He caught everything. You'll see that on DNR T5. Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh, that was awesome. Um, I give this team a hard time and I realize I need to be nicer. How about Emery? Emery was down against uh, ALA, came back. Jace Curtis ran for two touchdowns. Um, he also caught a touchdown that was called back on a penalty. Just wanted to give him some love there. And then Colton Curtis, I'm guessing they're related, had a touchdown as well. Emery knocks off ALA 20-13 to for my old rivals, the Emory Spartans. You know what, Dusty, if I can change and you can change, Everybody can change. <laughs> How about uh, a team that did something that I don't remember the last time I've ever seen, Dusty? This might be the first time ever. Maddox Madsen did not throw a touchdown pass in the first quarter against West. He had to settle for four the rest of the way. American <laughs> Ford 43-19 to in their victory over the West Panthers. Uh, a team we put in our top 25 for good reason. Snow Canyon went up to Morgan. It's a long bus ride. They kicked us off at 5.30. Landon Fry lit it up, threw for three touchdowns. Two of those went to Jake Hill as the Warriors knocked off the Trojans 24-13. You want to talk about the year that is 2020? Canyon View is 3-0. They had a 41-6 win over Enterprise as Jake Garrett had five passing touchdowns, three receiving for Tyler Maine. The Falcons! It, unreal. I mean, it's a nice start. Yeah, it is. And uh, let's go. Uh, this one's kind of fun. Uh, Cody Kirk tossed three touchdown passes, including two to Jalen Sargent. Rushed for another as Logan in a shootout yeah. against Cypress wins 31-28 to and uh, pulled off a three-point win. You know, the fairy tale isn't over. It's it's just on pause. As the Granger Lancers fell to Highland, uh, Highland Rams with a 21 to nothing first quarter. They jumped on the Lancers. My understanding, Cadius did not play in this game, the quarterback, so things were shifted around a little bit for the Lancers. A late charge, not enough as they fell to Highland 31 to 14. The Rams had two offensive touchdowns, one defensive touchdown, and a special team touchdown in the win. That was well done. Yeah. Sometimes, you, sometimes you have the one, it's just, it's just a tickle, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, Mountain View, we talked about, we teased this one earlier, yeah. trailing Dixie late, 40 seconds to go, Liam Hone scores, and Mountain View gets a 21 to 20 win, two and one, the one loss to Orm, but a big win for Mountain View. I don't wanna say statement, a little early, but a nice mark on the season, getting the win against Dixie. That's validation is what it is. Yeah. This is a team you gotta be worried about. Coach in Anderson, yeah. in four, that's what I say, 4A, yeah. I, it's really open. How about maybe the slugfest of the night, Dusty? We had this game. It was a game that we picked and a game that has been, you know, kind of shifted sides in the last three years. Kearns and Olympus and the Titans, boy, trying to get things kind of settled and going again. The Kearns Cougars, 14 to 7, get the victory as Toya Vow had a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown in the win for Kearns. In a battle of all the celebrities and where they like to hang out in Utah, Park City versus St. George. Park City versus Pineview, I should say. <laughs> um, it was, oh, this game, just absolutely unreal. Yeah. First of all, all the scoring, uh, 81 com combined points in this one. And uh, Pineview got to a big lead, 21-0. Yeah. I think it was 27-7 at the half. Yep. Park City came storming back with scores from uh, it was Kirby Barnes had a big night. Barnes had an 8-yard kick, 8-yard run, and 80-yard run. Uh, for a score as well, uh, Max Alford, a 17-yard touchdown pass from Chase Byard, come all the way back to Cal, scores late, two-point conversion, good, just for Kirby Baines to then 
Return into the house, 95 yards. Missed the extra point. Missed the extra point, 41-40 win for Pineview. A little longer, that's not that quick, but you gotta give it its due. Yeah. What a night and a tough loss for uh, Park City, but nice win for Pineview. Really nice win. How about Millard and Delta, Dusty? The Wabbits had a 14 to nothing lead at the first quarter. You're not safe from the Eagles when uh, it's just 14 nothing. Millard comes all the way back. Stevenson had two passing touchdowns. DeGraff and Reed had two rushing touchdowns. An 18 to nothing fourth quarter, able to distance Millard past Delta. You want offense in Cache Valley, Dusty? You have more? Is that what you want? Yes. Yeah, I do. Now look, I kind of have a little bit of a standard where I don't really talk about Mountain Crest unless there's a loft house. I got good news for you. There's a loft house. Mountain Crest 56-22 over Bonneville. Loft house had a passing touchdown. Oswald and uh, Veter both had two rushing touchdowns each in a lopsided victory for the Mustangs. Man, it feels good to talk about Mountain Crest football again, doesn't it? Does he play nose tackle? I don't know. That's what I want to know. At 115 pounds. And when? Granted, Ethan was a stud at yeah, Iowa too. So, uh, uh, all right. Since we're in Cash Valley, let's stay in Cash Valley. Can I go to the shocking game of the night for yeah, me? Yeah. Ridgeline, 45 yeah. to 7 over Farmington. Wow. I don't need to know all the details. All I need to know is that they beat Farmington 45 to 7. Uh, Caden Cox ran for three touchdowns, connected with Strat, uh, Strat Simmons for another in the win for the Riverhawks all over the Phoenix. Yeah, that was that was a shocker, wasn't it? Yeah. How about a game where it was a matchup of Tigers, Dusty? You know, the Milford men had to come up and take on the Ogden Tigers, and Ogden got the better of them. 30 to six is the uh, Tigers of the orange and black taking care of business. Shelby had two rushing touchdowns. Norton had a pick six. How about this? Ogden three and oh, Dusty, for the first time, since 19 or since 09 when they went six and four it's their best record since 1997 when they went six and six ogden we see ya and uh come back off independence yeah, feels great to be able to see them get some wins absolutely um how about this one late in the game it was seven nothing canab they turned the ball over on downs inside the red zone gunnison couldn't quite Throw an interception and Kanab gets a score late. It was Carson Bloomquist and Derek Houston. He's scoring touchdowns for the Cowboys. It's Kanab setting up a showdown against Millard coming up this week. Matter of fact, Dane teased it earlier. Make sure we got that one on there. It's Kanab knocked off Gunnison Valley 14 0. Delulu! Wow, wow, Hey, Gunsmoke was shot and down in Kanab, so. That's going to be a good one. Yeah. Uh, how about Skyline? We talked about Juan Diego, been a tough start for them. The Eagles taking care of business, 35-14 over the soaring. Eagle Bowling Broke had two passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Folks, the Skyline Eagles, the schedule set up really well. They might have a really interesting Region 6 matchup right around the late September. For a little tease. Uh, do she hit my carbon dinos really bad? Uh, Brighton, 35-14 <laughs> win yeah, over Lavin Woods Cross. Gabe right Curtis, Cole Lavin. Uh, had big nights for, for Brighton. The Bengals looking really, really good. Region 6 going to be very interesting to see what happens where everyone else shakes out because right now it looks like it's Brighton skyline like it used to be. End of September. Yeah, could be a good one. How about the West Lake Thunder, the hammer of Thor dealing with Hunter. They take care of business in this one. Ross had three passing touchdowns, 25-14 as Region 4 remains perfect. Um, Grantsville. Grantsville took yeah. on Manti. Manti did not have their night. It was Dylan Richardson, uh, caught a pass from Caleb Sullivan. Must have been a little uh, Philly special action there. Blake Thomas uh, and Caden Kelly all scored for Grantsville in the win over Manti. Manti just could not get the offense moving against uh, the traveling Grantsville uh, Cowboys. You know, Dusty, we talk about passing performances, and you got to be careful because with the big nights that Dart has been having lately, Landon Bowles is in a bit of a foot race, and he came up last night or Friday night trying to keep that lead as North Sam Pete 58 0 over South Severe. Bowles had four passing touchdowns. Landon, I don't know if that's going to get the job done, man. Jackson's in the 5 6 range, so. This is Alex Kate versus Riley Nelson in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and James Lark, too. They yeah, all three were yeah, going after it. Yeah. Uh, because here's another one to throw in the, the hat in the ring. McKay Hillstead. Yeah. McKay Hillstead against Dorham had a huge night. Sky Ridge supplanting themselves, saying, maybe we're the second best team in the state. They think they're first, I would argue. But uh, it's really good no matter what. Yeah, it is. But I'll tell you what, Sky Ridge 35-14 win over Orem. Hillstead looked beyond his years. This is from Ryan McDonald. By the way, Ryan, you supply me with a lot of content. <laughs> I'm giving you some love here. 
This is what Ryan wrote in his breakdown. McKay Hillstead looked beyond his years in this one, scoring four total touchdowns, uh, one rushing, three passing, and throwing for over 300 yards. Almost more impressive, though, was the defense from Skyridge, which kept the talented Orm offense in check throughout the majority of the game. Ryan, want to cite you there, pal. <laughs> yeah, well, good week. <laughs> it was a good week. Any ones we missed, hit us up on Twitter at DNewsRewind, at Dane underscore Stewart, at Dusty Litster. And I'd uh, love to hear from where we missed. We'll make sure we get it right. But also, yep. make sure you get us those DNR top five plays a little early. Yeah. There's only so many eyes out there. Uh, if there's stuff we missed, hit us up, let us know, and we'll uh, rectify. All right, let's get to looking good. Brought to you by Black Clover. Again, this is team performances, individual performances that we just could not overlook. Dane, who's your candidate? Well, for me, Dusty, uh, you know, there were a lot of really great performances this week, but I look at a team that needed every ounce of performance they got from their quarterback. And I'm going to go with Braden Bunnell for Pine View. Talk about a young man threw four passing touchdowns, and he threw the two point conversion that ended up being the ultimate decider in a victory for Pine View. Hey, look, they don't. Historically, and correct me if I'm wrong, they haven't come out on a lot of the right sides of these shootouts with Northern Utah teams. Uh -huh. Braden Bunnell, congratulations on a big night, four passing touchdowns, and a pivotal win for the Panthers. Yeah, lost a Hell Mary against Green Canyon, yeah. lost another one against Ridgeline, and then, yeah, you're absolutely right, in the beginning of this year, too. Look, we don't do the theme segment as much as we used to back in the day. Yeah. When we come to a school, there's a reason for it. Jackson Dart was ready, as Anish Shaw from ESPN said, look, he gave me a shot on his show, I'll give him a shot on mine. Uh, he said, Jackson Dart was ready for his close-up. Six touchdown passes for Jackson Dart, and it'd be impressive if he hadn't done it early in the year, but doing his Bingham, that's still a thing. That's still a big thing, because you know how good Dave Peck is with defense, how good Bingham will be, by the way. Dave's saying don't judge him the first few weeks. But Jackson Dart absolutely lighting up the sky on the night on national television with the Plenty of people watching all across the country, putting on a show. Jackson was looking so good. He'll be looking good in some Black Clover gear as well. So uh, who would you have as your Black Clover looking good candidates? Hit us up. We know there's plenty out there. There's a lot, but we can only pick two. There's only two of us on the show. So hit us up. Let us know on Twitter, DNR, or probably DNews Rewind, at Dana underscore Stewart, at Dusty Litster. Week four coming up. Our game schedule will be coming up. Look yeah. for that video as well. DNR, top five plays coming out as well. But uh, enjoy the show. Appreciate all the support. But for uh, Vince France, Dane Stewart, I'm Dusty Lister. Thanks for joining us watching Deseret News Rewind on Deseret.com.